Hello and good morning, everyone. Hope you guys are having a fantastic day. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make the apple cinnamon muffins that I had posted in my stories yesterday. I had actually filmed this video and made the muffins yesterday, but I sat down to edit it this morning and realized I had forgotten or somehow lost the intro to the video. So it will all be okay. I will still show you how to make the muffins, but there is no matching intro for this one. So I do apologize, um, but you will still get the recipe. These turned out amazing. Like the boys absolutely loved them. It was so fun to come home and the house still smelled like fall with the, the cinnamon and all the spices. So it was a good time and they loved them and I'm sure that you will too. So let's just jump right into it. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. We have got four cups of flour, which is a lot. This is a fairly big recipe. You could easily cut this in half and probably make one regular loaf size and it would be plenty of dough or batter for that. Okay, so there's four cups of flour. Next thing that we're going to use, we need two cups of sugar. Now, in my house, if the sugar gets shorted just a speck, I don't get too upset about it. With three little boys, a little less sugar is not always a bad thing. <laughs> so, I'm going to do about Oh, one and three-fourths cup or so, but the recipe does call for two cups. Okay. The next thing that we're going to go ahead and do is two tablespoons of baking powder. I love these mixing spoons. These were actually a promotional item that Todd had brought home from his company and I was kind of like oh that's sweet hon but you know kind of I mean don't think you're ever going to use something you know and it turns out I have used these more than my other set I like that they're just all connected so it's, everything's right there I don't have to go looking for them and then we're going to do a teaspoon of salt You can just mix that up. Okay. And it looks something like that. All right, so for our wet ingredients, you want two eggs. And I had already cracked my eggs and kind of Beat them just a little bit. And we're going to get them in there. And of course, the reason that you always crack your eggs in a separate dish or bowl is just in case there's any surprises in the egg or shells, that sort of thing. Definitely don't want that in your food. <laughs> so. Next up is two cups of milk. And then we need two thirds, veg two thirds of a cup of some type of vegetable oil. I always use olive oil. I get the um, the light because it helps with the taste not be quite so strong. And I'm actually almost out, so I'm going to have to combine because this bottle is empty. Use this one. And of course, it is the um, uh, first cold pressed um, 
keeps it just a little bit more pure. I'm going to add just a speck of vanilla. There again, I never really measure this too closely. Just pour until it seems like it's enough. <laughs> and then we're going to mix that up a little bit. Let a little bit combine. And of course, it's not going to combine terribly well because of the oil that's in that. It's obviously not going to mix very well. I don't know if I can let you see it. But. Then you're going to start combining your dry ingredients just slowly. You don't do it all at once. Put about maybe a third of it in there. And just whisk it up. With a batter like this, you don't ever want to over mix it. Just enough till it's combined. See that it's just combined it's not overly mixed um so next I'm going to add in my apples these are peeled and chopped now the recipe calls for one apple there's a piece that I missed I'll put that up here in a second um the apples that I have right now were really really tiny and one that I pulled out had a slight bad spot on it so I used about one and a half apples. Okay, so I chopped up that little sauce that I had forgotten. And now it is time to add in the cinnamon. Now I'm just using ground cinnamon. Um, Todd and I kind of differ on this. He loves cinnamon and I'm, I don't know, kind of guess in the middle. Don't love it, don't hate it certainly tend to like less than more. So I'm only gonna put about a tablespoon in there for this one. Okay, now how many of you dread doing cupcakes because you hate filling them? I know I do. In fact, there was a lot of times that I would try to figure out anything else I could do because I didn't like to do it. So, I'm going to show you a trick, and some of you probably already know this, um, but for those of you that don't, it's a nice neat little trick. So, alright, we've got our cupcake liners in, and we are ready to fill. Okay, you're going to start with your bowl and your cookie scoop. Like I said, some of you probably already know this, I'm sure most of you do, but it has been a lifesaver for me. You take it. And it is definitely enough. Um, this is, I think the one inch scoop that I have. And it's always been enough, especially with how cupcakes or any type of sweet bread kind of like this rises. Just one scoop has always been plenty. See how perfectly those go in there? I'm going to finish this up and I will see you guys when these come out of the oven. All right, so the first batch is in the oven. 
but I decided on this next batch, I wanted to do something a little bit different. We're gonna add, it's almost like a streusel type topping with some chopped pecans. So I'll show you how you do that real quick. All right, so in this bowl, I have got probably about a tablespoon of butter. Let me see if I can grab a piece here. Chopped up pretty small, about two tablespoons of flour, about a teaspoon, or sorry, one tablespoon of sugar, and then just a little bit of cinnamon. And I'm gonna use my pastry um, tool here and kind of cut that all in until it's good and crumbly. Now once you have your butter cut in, it should look something like this, just kind of a real fine, grainy, almost like a little bit of sand. And these are already filled. We're just gonna take this and just sprinkle a decent little amount over the tops of each one of the muffins. All right, so these are the two batches that I've taken out of the oven so far. We're gonna test with this little tool here just to make sure that they're done. And I love this tool because as you can see, it does not tear up your muffin or your cake or whatever it is you're baking when you test it. You can see that, but it came off perfectly clear and clean. So those are done. And then those are done too. And you can tell like it doesn't leave a big gaping hole and what you just baked so all right guys so here it is finished product it's got some butter on it and ready to enjoy hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon let me know how your muffins turned out and if you liked them and i will see you next time